Hello. I'm so excited. Another month is here. So that means month and money pulse check time. So. getting situated here. Hello, we are live. Okay, let me share. And then we can get Started group. Then pulse check time. Hey, Amanda, how are you doing? Hi, Wesley. All right, let's see if anyone else joins in before we get started. Can't believe it's the last day of April. I'm good, Amanda, just kind of tripping out that 2018 is almost in its fifth month. It's crazy. All right, well, I think we can go ahead and get started. So let me share my screen. All right. Okay, this is our fourth month of month and money pulse checks. So everyone should be somewhat accustomed to this. I do this at the end of every month and really the ultimate purpose is to pulse check exactly where you are with your budget, with your spending, with your goals. And then I also share where I'm at. You know, I'm not um, perfect. I make mistakes too, but hey, we learn from our mistakes so we can get better. So I'm gonna do the month and money pulse check for April. I'm gonna quickly recap exactly how to pulse check your money. Then I will share my results. And then I am gonna talk a little bit about this informal no spend challenge that the City Girl Savings Facebook group has going on for May. So let's dive in. Let's start with three key pieces of information you need to actually complete your month and money balls check. So number one, your budget. I want you to review the budget that you set for April. So at the beginning of April, you should have sat down and thought through what expenses you had for the month and then outlined where you wanted your spending to go, especially when it comes to those discretionary areas. So look at the budget that you set at the beginning of the month, and then you're gonna ask yourself the following questions. What happened that was supposed to? So did everything go according to plan for your budget? If so, that's good. That means that you should have stayed in line with the spending limits that you set for yourself. 
did any unexpected expenses come up? And if so, what were they? And then take it a step further. For those unexpected expenses that popped up and likely threw your budget off, will they be recurring? Is this something that you need to factor in for May or just moving forward in general? And then what needs to be changed for May? So if any of those unexpected expenses in April popped up and they will be recurring, you need to make sure you adjust your budget for May accordingly. Um, you also want to think about your spending in the discretionary categories. Now, if you're in the City Girl Savings Facebook group and you're joining for the No Spend Challenge, then May's discretionary spending categories should be zero. And I'll talk more about that uh, after we wrap the pulse check. Okay, so number two, uh, as far as key pieces of information you need to complete your month and money pulse check is your spending. So I know I sound like a broken record, but the extent of your financial responsibility does not stop with the budget. You have to actually take it a step further and track your spending. So you should be tracking your spending throughout the month. Any of my clients who are watching this know I request that you track daily, but at least every week. So you can track via a spreadsheet, which is what I use, my clients use. You can track via an app. Um, you can physically write it out. It doesn't really matter as long as you are actually keeping tabs on where your money's going. Because if you're not, then how do you know you're actually following your budget? Hmm? Good question. So since you have your spending already lined up for the month of April, to complete your month and money pulse check, you want to ask yourself the following questions. What areas did you over or underspend in and why? So if you overspent in any particular area, is it a one-time mess up? Did something come up that was unexpected? Do we need to plan for something for May? Um, and in any area that you underspent in, can we change that limit for May's budget? So for example, let's say you budget 200 a month for fun and going out, but you only spent 100 this month. Can you lower that to 100 for May and then save the additional 100? Another question to ask is what spending areas may be higher for May? So I want you to start thinking ahead. Do you have any birthdays, graduations, special events that you need to plan for and budget for? If so, now is the time to do so before you set out your May budget. Um, you don't want to be in a situation where the end of May comes, you knew you had graduations to attend, but you didn't budget for it accordingly. And then lastly, what can you do differently to stay in budget for next month? So if you overspent in any particular area, how can you change that for May? Hopefully the no spend challenge will help, but think about what you can do a little bit differently to make sure you're actually following the budget you set for yourself. And then lastly, the third piece of information that you need to complete your month and money pulse check is your goals. So we should all be working towards something. I want you to review the goals that you had set for April or any goals that you were working towards in the month of April and then ask yourself the following questions. Did you make the appropriate progress? So if your goal is to save $12,000 in 2018, that's $1,000 a month. That means you would have needed to save $1,000 in April. Did you do that? If so, good job. If not, what will you need to change to make sure you can move forward and reach your goals accordingly? So if you only save $500 in April when you should have saved $1,000, how can you make up that additional $500 to ensure that you reach your goal by the end of the year? And then lastly, are you on track to reach your goals? Are you scheduled to reach your goals earlier than expected? Are you scheduled to reach your goals later than expected? Think about the exact deadline for your goals and the progress that you've made thus far, and then adjust any savings requirements accordingly for May. So 
That was a quick recap on how to pulse check your money at the end of each month. Let's get into my results. Okay, so I wanna start with the wins because I'm positive over here and um, I had a few good wins. I received a tax refund, which was really exciting. I wasn't really expecting it, so it kinda came out of the blue, but it allowed me to save more than I had planned to for the month of April, so that was exciting. Um, I also went on vacation, which I think most of you may have seen in the Facebook group, but I'm really proud of myself because prior to vacation, I saved up consistently and reached a goal amount that allowed me to have fun on vacation and come back and not really worry. Um, so it's safe to say I definitely used everything that I saved up for for vacation and a little more, but... Ultimately, I'm proud of the progress I made for that vacation. And then lastly, this is the biggest win, and I know you all can relate. For the first time in 2018, I stayed under my food spending limit for the month. Only by 80 cents, but that is a win because January, February, and March, I had been consistently overspending in the food area. <laughs> So it was a major win for me, even if it was only 80 cents under budget. Um, so some opportunities I had. Um, unexpectedly, I went shopping prior to my vacation and spent more than I should have. And so that basically made me exceed my shopping slash recreational category. Um, I've noticed a pattern in uh, my month and money pulse check results for the past few months. My personal bills category has been over month over month over month. So I really need to do some analysis and see exactly what is causing it to be over month over month over month. And if though there are unexpected expenses in there that I didn't factor in, I definitely need to do so moving forward. I think personal bills is an area that should be consistent every month. So I um, definitely need to do some digging to figure out what's going on there. And then goal progress. So I had shared with the group quite some time ago, but my goal is to save for a down payment on a home. I have achieved that goal, but I consistently contribute to that savings account every month. So I'm excited about that. And I also started saving for a brand new car. My goal is to pay for the brand new car in cash and not have a car payment. I have not had a car payment since high school, so I do not want to change that now. And that's pretty much my month end money pulse check results. So let me stop screen sharing, see if you guys have any questions or anything to share. And then I will talk through the um, no spend challenge for me. So, hi Brittany, thanks for joining. So question for those of you guys watching, do you complete month end money pulse checks? Amanda, I should know the answer to that, but I want to see what you guys think. And if so, do you find anything interesting month over month when you review your financial progress? Any takers? And I think there may be a lag too. So if you are commenting and I'm not seeing, bear with me, I'm, I'm watching. All right, guys, uh, <laughs> this is your first month end money pulse check, Amanda. Hey, I will tell you this, it won't be our last. There's always room for improvement, but each month will get better and better, and that's ultimately the goal. So stay positive. I like it. All right, who else is joining? If you're watching us, say hi and um, tell us a little bit about your month and money pulse check. Rachel, hello, thanks for joining. This is your first month and money pulse check also. That is very exciting. Um, definitely watch the recap because I went through 
the three key pieces of information you need to complete your pulse check. So definitely rewatch that so you can make sure you're doing it as effectively as possible. Oh, I'm glad you're in the group too, Amanda. Okay, so before I wrap up, I want to just really quickly talk about this no spend challenge and what exactly it means. Amanda had a great question, what constitutes no spending? So first and foremost, I want to say that any personal bill, any living expense, rent, things like that, those are excluded from the no spend challenge. We cannot get out of paying for those things, unfortunately. Um, really the no spend challenge applies to discretionary spending. So things that you don't necessarily need to survive. And I know what you're thinking. Yes, you do need your Starbucks coffee to survive, but no, you don't. You can totally brew your own coffee at home. <laughs> so um, any discretionary area, shopping, dining out, uh, groceries are excluded. You definitely got to eat to live. Um, so groceries, dining out, um, any expense like going out to eat or going out with your friends, doing an activity. The goal here is to not spend a dime on any discretionary spending. Doesn't mean you have to stay in the house and be a hermit, um, but it means you do have to get resourceful and maybe research free activities in your city, go for a hike. Um, I know for me, I plan on going to Barnes and Nobles, reading magazines or books and just keeping it very low key. Um, just being in that environment with my computer and maybe writing some articles. Um, you know, I plan on doing my own nails. In fact, I did yesterday. I don't know if you guys can see. Um, yeah, you just got to get creative. We're not gonna, you know, kill ourselves here. It's super informal. Um, but the goal is not to spend anything on discretionary areas. All right, guys. So that was the April month end money pulse check recap. I shared how to pulse check your money. I shared my April results. And then I talked a little bit about the no spend challenge that we're starting tomorrow. So make sure you stock up at the grocery store and get all your uh, snacks in order. <laughs> all right, guys. I will see you in the group. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.